All right, good morning guys. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Raspberry Pi so you can talk to it uh, headlessly, that is, without a keyboard or a monitor. So what you're going to need to be able to complete this is an SD card that is compatible with your Raspberry Pi. This is a Model B Plus, and the type of SD card you need is the micro SD. You're going to want an SD adapter so that you can plug it into your computer. You're also going to need the power supply for your Raspberry Pi, in this case I'm using a cell phone charger and an Ethernet cable. First things first, you're going to want to put together your SD card and plug it into your computer. So we see here it has shown up in our computer. Great. So uh, I've already formatted this, there are only files on it, but let's assume that this is a brand new SD card that you are now going to format for the Raspberry Pi. The next thing you're going to want to do is go on the internet and you're going to want to download your operating system. I'm going to show you how to use Raspbian operating system and I've already downloaded it and you're also going to want to download something called Pi Filler. Uh, this is a, a free program that you can download and this will just make our lives a whole lot easier. Rename your uh, SD card something obvious like Raspberry Pi. You might have other uh, SD cards plugged in. Next what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up Pi Filler and you can just follow the instructions on this. So we're going to so if you've already attached your SD card to your Mac please eject before continuing. Okay my bad. So first thing we're doing is not inject inserting the SD card so I'm going to remove it now okay it's been removed going to continue and I put my operating system right here on the desktop so it tells us that you're going to that we're going to erase it so we're going to want to insert our SD card there it is again so we have renamed the card Raspberry. I'm going to continue. It looks for the SD card. It found it. And now we continue. I'm going to wipe the card. And now we're going. So this is going to take quite a bit of time. Uh, it, it says it'll take about half an hour. It takes for my computer maybe around 25 minutes. Uh, I'll see you when it's done. All right, so it looks like we have finished with our SD card. It automatically ejected for us, and so now we can quit Pi Filler. If we pull out the SD card and disassemble it so we get the micro SD card, we're now going to put it into our Pi. So there we go. The next thing you're going to want to do is plug in your Ethernet cable. I have mine already connected to my computer, so we just hook that up. And then you can connect your power supply. You see these lights here are flashing a green and a red. When the green one stops blinking a whole bunch, then you know that you are up and running. So while that's booting up, what you're going to want to do if you're on a Mac is you're going to want to go into your network settings. So go into your system preferences, network. And here you see your Ethernet connection and you can configure your IP4V. And the default address of the Raspberry Pi I found, at least for mine doing this setup, is 192.168.2.2. You can manually set this, and this way you can connect to your Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is the IP address that you're going to be looking for on your local network through Ethernet. I'm connected to the Internet through Wi-Fi. I'm connected to the Raspberry Pi through Ethernet. So while you're here, the next thing you're going to want to do is go into sharing. If you go into sharing, you have the option for Internet sharing. You want to turn this on. You want to share it to computers using the Ethernet and you want to share your Wi-Fi connection. That's if you have the same setup as me. If you get your internet through Wi-Fi, uh, through Ethernet cable, a, a different Ethernet cable, then obviously this would not be Wi-Fi. If you're connected to your Raspberry Pi, not directly through Ethernet, but say through a Thunderbolt, then you would share it through the Thunderbolt. That should be obvious. If you get this set up, then your Raspberry Pi will have access to the internet through your computer. 
So now we're going to SSH in through the terminal. So if I open up the terminal now, I'm expand it out a little bit. We can tie connecting to our Raspberry Pi. The username you're going to want to use is Pi, and we're going to try connecting to 192.168.2.2. That is the IP address that we had set earlier. You may encounter this error. This is something that you'll encounter if you have set up the Raspberry Pi before, just like I am doing right now, and then wipe the SD card and then try to do it again. So you may not encounter this bug, but if you do, the way you can go about using this, if you know what is in the uh, known hosts file there, you can get rid of the known hosts file. Now that it's gone, I can now try to SSH into my Pi. So SSH into the Pi 192.168.2.2 and we want to accept and now it prompts us for the password. The password as I mentioned is Raspberry and now we are inside of our Raspberry Pi. We are talking to the Pi completely headless. Next, what we're going to want to do is actually get the Pi set up, uh, configured for us to uh, use later. So the way you go about doing that is you'll want to open up the configuration, which is raspi-config. And you go in here and there's a few options that you can do. I have a 16 gig card of which we're not using all 16 gigs, so we can expand the file system. So let's do that. So next time we reboot, we'll have access to the entire SD card. Excellent. Uh, some other things that you're going want to do is, uh, and th this setup might change as the operating system changes, but all the options should remain here. Uh, we're going to want to change how we boot. So instead of booting to the text console, we're going to boot into the desktop and have it log in automatically for us. This makes remote desktoping into the Pi possible. So let's do that. And then there are some other options here, like if you want to turn on a camera, which I'll get to later, or say if you want to change the name of your Pi, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to call it instead Raspberry Pi. I'm going to call it Grow Pi. Grow Pi. And then when you're done with that, you can finish, and then let's reboot it. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to actually set up the remote desktop and how to set up a VNC server so that you can easily uh, view the graphical user interface of the Pi. See you then.